Good afternoon. Before I begin, before I begin, a quick disclaimer. My name is Fabio Salas, and I'm an active duty Marine Corps officer, and I'm going to talk a little bit about women in the military, but I want to make clear that everything I say today represents my views and my views only, and do not necessarily represent the views of the DOD or its components. All right, now that we have the formalities out of the way, I'm going to start by showing you six slides with some pictures. All I want you to do is be mindful of what comes to mind when you see each one. Here's the first one. The second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. And the last one. I won't ask her to share what comes to mind when you saw each one, but if you're anything like me, you probably associated some of them with a specific gender. Don't feel bad if you did. The truth is, most of us do the same. The truth of the matter is, all of us have biases ingrained into us from an early age, which make it difficult to see things any other way. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. Like many men from my generation, I grew up believing certain stereotypes about women. But it's only now that I'm about to be 43 years old that I'm learning that much of what I learned about women growing up is a complete lie. Now, I'll be honest, it's a long list. And I'm not going to take up too much of your time going through all of them. But today, I want to discuss just four of the myths that I learned growing up and how some incredible female Marines have helped me see the light. Myth number one, women are emotional crybabies. I'm sure we've all heard this one. To highlight my point here, I want to share a personal story with you. I got married when I was 20 years old, just a few months after joining the Marine Corps. In 2004, after four years of marriage, we had a child. Fast forward to 2013, and we divorced. At the same time, I received military orders to move to Okinawa, Japan, while my ex and my son moved to St. Louis, Missouri. To say that the next few years of my life were difficult would be an understatement. I had never, before my divorce, I had never cried more than once, maybe twice in my adult life. But after my divorce, it seemed like crying was a new hobby. I had never felt so alone and so desolate. At work, I was the perfect picture of stoic. But outside of work, anytime I thought about my son and all that I had lost, I would break down and cry. I remember back then feeling so much shame for the way that I felt for crying all the time, for simply not being tough enough to just deal with it. it. Took years of counseling and personal growth to finally understand that holding on to that emotional baggage, it didn't make me stronger. If anything, it only made dealing with my situation that much harder. But you see, I grew up believing that men aren't supposed to cry, that only women can do this. Of course, ladies here and everywhere know that this isn't true. They know better than us. But I held on to that for so long that I believed it. It took me years of crying incessantly to recognize that crying is the normal part of dealing with emotional trauma. It took me hitting rock bottom to recognize that emotional intelligence makes me a better person, a better Marine, and a better leader. But emotional intelligence isn't just helping me as an individual, it's actually helping me connect with my Marines in a way I never could before. Now, I'm not saying that I'm up here transforming lives, I'm not Gandhi just yet, but I do believe that I, that I empathize and I understand them just a little bit more than I did before. Myth number two, women are physically weak. I hear this in the military a lot. This myth goes hand in hand with the previous one. Sometimes I find it hard to believe that people are still surprised to learn that we have women in the military. But then again, it's easier to understand what that happens when you think about how social media and Hollywood have a habit of portraying women as damsel in distress. Well, I'll tell you, after 23 years in the Marine Corps, I've seen firsthand just how physically, how physically strong women can be. I've walked side by side with women who can carry 100 pounds on their backs. I still recall a young female officer who would routinely help men much bigger than her during hikes in the hills of Quantico, Virginia. When the Marine would fall back, usually a male, because most Marines are males, she would literally take their pack push them to the front of the formation, give the pack back, and then go back and repeat the process with the next Marine that was falling back. Sometimes, I can't fathom the idea that people think 
that women are weak when I'm seeing what they're capable of day in and day out. I like to think that I'm relatively strong and fast, but everywhere I've been stationed, I've met women that are stronger and faster than me. So it's impossible for me to think of women as weak when I've seen what they're capable of. And this doesn't just apply to female Marines. I like to participate in Spartan races, marathons, and all kinds of other physical challenges. But I have no shame in telling you there are always women ahead of me at these races of all ages. So we can't make general statements about women being weak when the facts say otherwise. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that an average 135 pound woman is going to be stronger and faster than an average 135 pound man. But we do have to recognize that there are some incredibly strong women out there. So these general statements about weakness don't, don't bear truth. Myth number three, women are better suited for domestic roles. I was born in Columbia, South America, and I migrated to Brooklyn, New York when I was nine years old. As I think back, I can't help but recognize that those two environments taught me very general gender roles. Women clean and cook, men go out and work for money. I never questioned it. It's all that I knew. And to be honest, as a man, I benefited from it because I hate doing house chores anyway. But then I joined the Marine Corps. There I was, 19 years old, living in the barracks, no one to clean for me, cook for me, do my laundry. I actually adjusted pretty quickly because I, I was expected to take care of myself. But even then, I didn't question what I thought were gender roles. I simply did what I had to because there was no other way. But then, a few years later, I started to learn about dual active military couples. These are couples where both spouses are in the military. I started to see that some couples share the responsibilities of the home and the responsibilities of parenting. In the last few years, I've actually started seeing single dads in the military. I never imagined I would see single dads in the military. It's rare enough seeing a single mom in the military on active duty, so now to see men doing it, it's only reminding me and reinforcing to me that this is something that men can do as well. Now my point here is not that men should supplant women in the home, or that men should completely take over the care of children. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, these are things that can be shared. It is not just a woman's job. For example, my wife works a full-time job. There are days when she's working and I'm not. Me cleaning or cooking doesn't make me any less of a man. It's not me doing a woman's job. It's me taking care of things that need done because we're one team. Myth number four, only women show, openly show affection to others. Let's do a quick survey here. For the men in the room, raise your hand up high if you've ever told another man who is not a family member that you love them. Take a look around, please. All right, put your hands down. Thank you. For the ladies in the room, put your hand up high if you've ever told another woman who's not in your family that you love them. Take a look around, please. Thank you, put them down. You probably noticed there were a lot more hands the second time around. Do we see the problem here? As I said earlier, I've been in the Marine Corps for 23 years. And in that time, I've developed a lot of close friendships with other male Marines. But I've never, ever told another man, especially one that's not in my family, that I love them. In fact, for most of my life, the only male I ever said I love you to was my own son, who's now 18 years old. This is a conscious effort I began when he was first born. A, because I wanted him to explicitly hear me say it. And B, because I wanted him to grow up thinking that it's normal for a man to express love for another. Now when I say it to him, it feels as natural as breathing. On the other hand, there's three other men in my life whom I struggle to express myself with in the same way. I've only said I love you to my own father a handful of times in my life, despite the fact that I love him very much. I have a brother who's 13 years younger than me. We're very close. But it's only in the last few years that I've actually started saying I love you to him. And lastly, I have a 16-year-old stepson who's in the audience. And I love him just as much as I love my own biological son. But because he came into my life as an older child, I still struggle to express myself in the same way. These are three men that mean the world to me. 
I would do anything for them. But every time I express those three little words to them, my, my heart speeds up like I'm doing something wrong. And what's crazy is, I now know that expressing myself and expressing my emotions in a healthy and appropriate way is okay. But I believe for so long that men can't express emotions in that way, that only women can express emotions in that way, that I still struggle to be the man that I want my voice to see. A man that's so confident in my own masculinity that I'm okay being vulnerable when I'm struggling with the burdens of life. And a man so in tune with what matters most in life that I can express love and affection for those I care for, regardless of whether they're men or women. But you see, the problem is, Sometimes we tell ourselves a story for so long that it becomes a part of who we are. Even when we realize that story is completely made up. It's a struggle we deal with every day. But the ladies are now showing us better. Okay, four myths. Now, to wrap it up, I want to show you some of the ladies that I'm talking about in the military that are showing us just how powerful vulnerability, emotions, and being your most sincere self can be. First up, we have Marine Corps Captain Jackie Barnum. She's stationed here in California. She's a Naval Academy graduate, has a strong social media presence, podcaster. Next to her, Naval Lieutenant Kelly Sabraki, also a Naval Academy graduate, also a podcaster, entrepreneur, also has a strong social media presence. But get this, she was a runner-up Miss California. As a young Marine, I would have never imagined a pageant woman serving on active duty, but here we are. And one of the things I love about these two ladies is that they're using their platform, their social media influence, to embrace who they really are. And they're teaching all of us that it's okay to not fit the mold, that it's okay to be just a little bit different, that it's okay to be you. Something that a lot of us struggle with. Next up, we have the all-female crew that participated in this year's Super Bowl. First time in history that we've had an all-female crew of pilots fly over the Super Bowl. Pretty awesome. And lastly, I have to showcase my own team. I have eight officers in my department. Out of those eight, three of them are females. Here we have First Lieutenant McCloskey, First Lieutenant Calhoun, and Chief One Officer Two Roberts. As we talk about sustainable future, we have to understand that bringing everybody into the fold, men, women, everybody, is going to help create this sustainable future. Now I have no idea what the future has in store for us. But I can think back when I was a young Marine, seeing a female officer was like seeing a unicorn. Now I have three out of eight in my department. Now, I'm not saying we're there yet. Most Marines and most officers are still male, but we're starting to see more and more coming to our, into our fold. And as I said, I have no idea what the future has in store for us. But if it looks anything like my group of officers here, I promise you, we're going to be in good hands. Thank you.